Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Futurist Podcast. I'm Lisejo Monzo, your Futurist, your host, and I'm super thrilled to be back with you after the long pause. This episode is dedicated to reflecting on the past six months of 2024 and expressing gratitude for the incredible experiences and even milestones that I've encountered in the first half of the year 2024. Life has been a whirlwind and I believe in the power of reflection and gratitude. That is why today I want us to dive into the events that have shaped the first half of 2024 and also to explore the gratitude that I feel for each and every one of these events and even milestones. First, I want us to rewind back to the month of February. In February, I embarked on a significant journey by enrolling in the Oxford School of Climate Change course that was for Hillary class of 2024. This six-week intensive program was demanding yet incredibly enriching. I mean, the knowledge and growth that I gained from this course have been truly invaluable and they set the stage for the months that are yet to come in the second half of the year. Immediately after the course that I took or that I was admitted into by Oxford School of Climate Change, my focus shifted into preparing for yet another important, exciting and incredibly phenomenal endeavor or project or initiative, which is the Dimeology Women and money conference this event required immense dedication and even effort from late february throughout the entire of march it was a challenging yet rewarding experience just bringing together inspiring women to discuss financial matters to discuss economic growth to discuss investments and to have among us phenomenal um, incredible men of amazing vision good knowledgeable men like our keynote speaker mr nelson Litwini, cfp so that was how february and march have been like on my side however then moved into another month that came with its events that came with its happiness month of april the first week of april was particularly tough for me i was quickly shifted from being excited about preparing for the Dermology women and money conference now getting into what was a particularly tough journey the futuristic energy efficiency rating system implementation kicked off just as i was grieving the loss of my grandfather it is in the same week where the project started where I lost a very important part of my life. I, ver- I lost a very important person in my life, my grandfather. It feels weird calling him my grandfather. That man was my father. He was a father. He was love. He was everything that you could ask for from a father. This man passed away after a short illness. It came as a shock. I remember just a week prior to his passing, I had a call with him. That was the week, or that was the week where we had our Easter holidays, late March. And I remember I had a call with him. Luckily, my phone is able to record calls. So anytime I miss him, I go back to our calls just to at least hear his voice. (sighs) Hearing about my grandfather's loss, really hit me it affected me deeply it broke my heart because i mean i thought that man would be there for i don't know for how long but i just wanted him to live a little long but god always has his plans and we cannot question god's plans so just like that my best friend my mentor passed on just after a very 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 short illness he just he was sick for one day i remember receiving a call that he is sick 
and he got into the hospital i was called on on wednesday and then on thursday um i got a call again he he was not in a state where i could talk to him he was critically ill for that one day and then the next day i received some of the most painful news ever so that was early april for me it was a combination of balancing grief with the demands of the project that i truly treasure and that was one of the most challenging times of my life however we then moved now to mid april despite the pain i received several emails of acceptance for various opportunities during this time but because i was still in that state of shifting from not making peace with the situation to making peace with the situation my concentration my focus was more on the law side i was allowing myself to feel the pain i was allowing myself to deal with the loss in early april throughout to mid april and when i received those several emails of being accepted for various opportunities um i remember one of them happened immediately after burying my grandfather on the 13th of april my grandfather's birthday is on the 13th of april so we buried him on the 13th of april which was his birthday so two days after that on the 15th of april i got a call from creative business cup informing me that i was shortlisted for the pitching competition although i was emotionally and physically drained i decided to just participate despite um the fact that there was no time because the pitch was happening on the 17th of april so i had to transition from the grief that i'm in to having to pitch within a space of five days i had a little dilemma where i felt like should i or should i not however i ended up deciding that let me just participate the tough part about this participation is that i had to travel from my home village which is a couple of kilometers away from the capital Khabarone where the pitch was happening and i had to travel all the way to Khabarone and then i got in Khabarone on the 16th and between the 16th and the 17th i had very few hours to prepare for the next day so i never had the chance to prepare for that pitch despite my lack of preparation or even looking at my slides or anything i was thrilled that at least i got to secure the second run up position despite my lack of preparation out of 11 finalists i was in the top 3 so knowing where i was emotionally knowing where i was mentally that i was not well even though i'm one of those people who are always smiling and laughing you hardly see what is beneath but i was not really in a, in the right state to partake in such a competition but i had to show up because i believe in showing up sometimes you just have to show up you know so that was april 17th now from april 17th i had a space of 10 days towards april 27th april 27th is the date for which we had said that we are having the diamology women and money conference that's the date where the conference was scheduled for so april 17th now is like um 15 days away or 15 days after my grandfather's passing so still it's not like i'm okay fully it's like i'm in this eventfulness you know moving from one event to another moving from one activity to another 
uh, it may look like a copy mechanism in a way <laughs> but somehow some people may call it escapism but I believed that in as much as I had said or I had scheduled when the year started I had written events in my quarterly and semi-annually and semi-annual um, planning for the year I had to accomplish them you know so that was it i missed all this the damnology women and money conference had to take place and it took place on the 27th of april it was a monumental event passing through all that in the month of april i even anticipated that we might postpone but because of the support that i had from my friends the support that i had from my team somehow they were my pillar of strength they were there to anchor me in these difficult times. They were there to tell me that, no, uh, don't worry. This event is going to happen regardless of all the challenges that we are coming across. So, indeed, on the 27th of April, which was a Saturday, the Diamology Women and Money Conference became a monumental event, surpassing all my expectations. I was deeply grateful and I'm still deeply grateful for the success of this conference and the incredible support that I have received from everyone who was involved, from our panel speakers, Nicolette Chinomona, Mamidi, myself, our keynote, amazing gentleman, Mr. Nelson Litwani CFP, shout out to them, our amazing team of ushers, Sis D, um, Vemune, uh, Gracie, Vanessa, Natasha, Pezzo, Lebo, Neo, Junior, Olorato, everybody. If I'm forgetting you, please forgive me. But we have such an incredible team that make sure that the event goes accordingly. And that is something that I feel I should be grateful about. So now we moved into the month of May, just two months ago. May was a month of incredible opportunities. I was honored to attend the Forbes 30 Under 30 Summit in Khaboroni, where I had the chance to meet some of the most incredible, brilliant minds from all over Africa. This event immediately when it commenced, in fact, it, it happened just a few days after the Diamology Conference. The Diamology was on the 27th of April and Forbes 30 under 30 was on the 5th of May throughout to the 8th of May. This event presented a really memorable time and opportunity for me where I met some of the most incredible, talented, young, amazing, trailblazing, entrepreneurs, innovators, researchers, artistic young people from all over Africa. It was a great opportunity that I always cherish. So immediately after that, or before that, I had another invitation from the World Bank Group Youth Summit inviting me to attend the World Bank Youth Summit in Washington, D.C. This event is one of the most peculiar, unique events. They don't just call anyone for for the World Bank Group Youth Summit, particularly for in-person attendance. They screen from thousands, ten thousands of young people from all over the world to see and to select the cream of the crop. And just finding myself among those who are selected to be in-person attendants was a privilege that I do not take for granted. It made me to realize that I'm worthy, a quality person that I am. Because if an institution like the World Bank sees that value in me, what more can I say, you know? So these events were enlightening and provided immense networking opportunity. Meeting like-minded individuals and learning from industry experts was truly the highlight of the first half of the year 2024. Now, moving to late May and drifting towards early June, 
After these events, I decided that I should make time to go and visit my widowed grandmother. I allowed myself to grieve and to process my grandfather's passing. This period of reflection and healing was necessary for my well-being. I allowed myself to go back to my grandfather's home, see the places where he used to sit, imagine him, look at his dogs, remind myself of the things that he used to do when he was alive. And that gave me time to heal in a way to get that closure that I needed to cry once more you know and it was something that was necessary and needed for me so following that I then kick-started another event or initiative that I had on my annual plan we kick-started the Transform Education Tour through my foundation, Les Hormones Foundation, where we visit schools nationwide and we try to address educational challenges, particularly speaking and encouraging children and sharing with them important um, knowledge, important information, important tips that can help them in their academics. And I was just excited to share with them a technique that I call CIDA, that I had um, discovered to be really effective as I was a student in a university. It helped me to move from being an average student to being a student who gets a GPA of 4.5. So having seen that tremendous power in that technique, I felt like I should make time to vis visit schools to share the same technique with children. It may come in handy for some children who maybe will discover it early in life. So that was it. June flew by with various projects and initiatives. I was focused on both my Y4C Youth for Climate project. I continued with my research work and dedicated time to also write my book that I'm currently working on and also the development of the futuristic energy efficiency rating system. So June was quite a busy and yet productive month that was filled with meaningful work. Now we are in July. As I look back to my birthday month of August, I was born in August. <laughs> Shout out to everyone who is born was born in August. I feel immense gratitude for the journey so far. I cherish both the painful and joyful moments. And I'm also content with the growth and experiences that I've had. I'm, a grateful, I'm super grateful for the support systems that I have in my life. First and most importantly, God, my family, my friends, my mentors, and colleagues, their unwavering support has been truly invaluable in my life. So when I look ahead, I'm excited for the future. The second half of the year holds so much promise and I'm eager to continue my journey with renewed energy and focus. From ongoing projects to even new opportunities that I am not yet in a position to disclose, I'm ready to embrace what lies ahead with an open heart and a grateful spirit. And as we wrap up this episode, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of you, my amazing listeners, for your continued support and patience. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I also want to acknowledge our sponsor, Dime Stimology, a platform that promotes the sustainable development goal number eight of decent work and economic growth through financial education and investment education. Thank you so much for their unwavering support in making this episode possible. Remember that practicing gratitude can transform your perspective and enhance your life. Until next time, 